All right, everyone, in this video, we're going to be looking at the directory structure for your ViewPress site. So we're going to go to ViewPress tutorial for the directory structure. And then I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at these main points over here. So we're going to look at the current directory structure of our site. Uh, we're going to look at the contents of the package.json file. We're going to look at the recommended directory structure for your ViewPress site. And then we're going to look at the recommended directory structure for themes. So if you're going to be using a theme, this will be the directory structure that you'd want to use. And then we're going to look at default page routing. And then we'll get into what we're going to be doing next. So to start with up here, this is our current directory structure. So this is going to be an overview of the current directory structure from the previous tutorial. And then we'll get into the recommended directory structure for the ViewPress site. So our current directory structure of the project is going to be based off of creating a repository for your project on GitHub, cloning the repository, setting a local version of Yarn for your project, and doing a manual installation of ViewPress. So this means if you're not using a local version of Yarn and or if you did a quick start installation, your current directory structure is going to be a little bit different. So if you're following along exactly with these videos, then your current directory structure is going to should match this exactly. If not, it may be a little bit different. Um, so this is what the current directory structure is going to look like. So you'd have that dart dot yarn file and inside of there you'd have that or that dot yarn directory. And then inside of there, you'd have that releases directory. And then you'd have that specific version of yarn for your project. And then we'd have this docs directory. And then you'd have that readme.md file that we made. And then we'd have our node modules directory and our docket attributes and the docket ignore file, the dot yarn RC, the license, the package.json, the readme, and then the yarn.lock file. So let's look at some quick descriptions of these. So the dot yarn uh, releases directory. So this releases directory in that dot yarn directory, that's going to store the local version of yarn for the project. And that's going to ensure that everyone working on the project is using the same version. So if you didn't set that local version of yarn for your project, you're not going to have that. And that's why we have optional up here. So if you don't want to use the same local version that we're using, or maybe you're not using yarn, you're using NPM, um, or maybe you just don't want to have that local version, then you won't have that. So that's why it's optional up there. And then inside of that releases directory, you're going to have that specific version of yarn. So that's the specific local version of yarn used in the code monkeys blog tutorials and in the code monkeys blog repositories and the file name. Um, it's going to be different if you're using a different version of yarn. And then we have the docs directory and inside of there, we have that readme.md file. So that's the first document for the site. And that's going to be used as the home page of the site. So that's this file right up here. And then we have the node modules directory. So that's going to contain all of the code for the installed packages. So that's what will be in that directory. And then we have the docket attributes right here. So that's used to prevent Git from showing large diffs when you add or update local versions of yarn. And then if you didn't set that local version of yarn for your project, then you won't have this file. Um, and then you have the docket ignore file, and that's going to ignore specified files and directory when making a commit to your repository. And then we have the dot yarn C file and that instructs your global version of yarn to use that specified local version in the project. If you didn't set that local version of yarn for your project, then again, you won't have this file. All right. And then we have the license and that tells others how they can use your code. And then we have the package.json and that's going to describe metadata about your site. And then we have the readme.md file, and that's used to describe your project in more detail and to document how to install and use your project. And then we also have that yarn.lock file, which is going to keep track of the exact versions of packages installed in the project. And if you're using NPM, you'll have a package lock.json file instead. All right. So let me just come over here. And if we list out, so right now I'm on the tutorial four branch of the, um, of the code monkeys blog tutorial. So you can, you know, clone this repository and then switch over to this branch. 
and if we run uh, yarn right here, this will give us that node modules. Um, so now we have that node modules directory. So in here, you see our uh, directory structure. We have that dot yarn, and then which has that um, releases directory. And then inside of there, we have that our version of yarn. And then if we get out of there, we list again. We could see um, we got the docs directory, so we'll cd into docs. And then inside of there, we have that readme.md file. And then let me just clear this list again. And uh, we got the docket attributes file. We got the docket ignore. Uh, the node modules. We have the dot yarnrc file. The license and then we have the package.json file, and then we're going to have that um, the readme.md file, and then our yarn.lock file. All right, so if you pull down the code, you're going to have all of this. You just run yarn, you get the node modules. Uh, when you check out this branch, you switch over to this branch, and um, or you know you could your directory structure may be a little bit different depending on how you're setting up your site. So that's our current directory structure. And a quick little reminder here is to update the docket attributes and docket ignore files. If you created your own repository and you're using a locally set version of yarn, then be sure to update that docket ignore file and add a docket attributes file as described in that installing yarn one post. That'll walk you through what you need to do for that. All right, so now let's look at the contents of the package.json file. So before we move on to the recommended directory structure, we're going to first look at the contents of the package.json file and we're going to add some simple updates to it. So the properties of your package.json file, they may be a little bit different depending on how you answered the questions when you initialized your project and if you use the quick start installation method instead of the manual installation method. So if you want to update any properties or values, you can just simply edit your package.json file directly. And if you plan on publishing your project to the NPM registry, then you can take a look at this npm package.json uh, documentation right here and they will make sure that you're following all of the specifications uh, that you need to if you plan on publishing. So here's what the contents of the package.json file looks like for the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials. So if we come over here and we're just going to nvim the package.json file and you can see that right here is the same thing as we have over here. We have the name, the version, the description, main property, the repository. Um, well, this one actually has the updated values already, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this, if you had the tutorial three version, it would look like this when you pull down the code. So this has the name, the version, description, main, repository, author, license property, the scripts, and then the dev dependencies. So the package.json file it contains metadata about your project. And this metadata includes information used to identify and describe your project and the package you install, uh, which follows this semantic versioning or semver. So this is what um, the package.json files when it's versioning the packages in the file. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can check out that documentation right there. So let's describe each property in a little bit more detail. So the name is just the name given to your project. The version is going to indicate the current version of your project. And again, the versioning follows this semver notation. And the description is used to describe and provide more information about your project. And main is a JavaScript file that starts the execution of your project. And the repository describes the location of the project repository containing the code. So here, our, uh, our repository is just going to be the URL to the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials. And then you can explicitly set the URL and a version control type in the package.json file by adding, for example, this repository as we have right here. And then you can put in the type and then you could put in Git and then the URL right here. And then that would be the URL to your, um, to your repository. So, and we also have the author, and that's going to describe the creator or owner of the project. And then you can explicitly set the author name, the email, and website in the package.json file by adding, for example, the name of the author. So you have this, um, this author object right here, and you can put the name in, and then you can put the email in, and then you can put the URL to 
your website to your project's website, your personal website. And that's how you would set that up. And then you have the license and that's going to indicate the type of license being used by the project. And then you have scripts, which are command line applications that are described as an object where the property is the name of the script. So this is the property is the name of the script that you would run right here is docs colon dev, for example. And the value is a command that gets run. So when you run yarn docs colon dev, that's going to run this right here, which is going to run view press dev docs, which builds that development environment for you. And then we also have dev dependencies, and these are dependencies you need during development only, i.e. not during production. So right here we have this dev dependency of, uh, of view press, and then our version is 1.8.2. So quick reminder here, down here as well is that if you want to install the same ViewPress version, so if you see a different version of ViewPress and you want to install the same version being used in the tutorials and in the blog, then you can run yarn upgrade ViewPress um, at 1.8.2, and that will install the same version. So then your ViewPress version will match here. All right, so then like you can already see over here, since we already opened it up, we made the simple updates to the package.json file. And to start with, we're going to add that version control type to the repository. So as you can see over here that we already added the um, type over here as a git for our repository. And then we also added the URL property. And then that's a link to the CodeMonkey's blog tutorials repository right there. All right, so if you wanted to add a specific version control for your repository and the URL, then you could do it like this. And then we've also added down here the author. So we added in the name and then the email property and then the URL. And then you could add your name, your email and the URL to your site, um, to the documentation for your site or whatever it is that you're building with ViewPress. You can add a URL to that. And if you prefer, you can also shorten the author property to be one <clears throat> string. So you could do author colon, then your name, and then in these um, angle brackets, you could do your email at example.com, and then you could, in parentheses, do whatever your website is. So you could add it in like that if you prefer. Um, yeah, so the email could be a personal or work email, and the URL could be a link to a personal website or a website related to your project. And then this is just what the contents looks like. So same thing over here as we have over here. And now that we have a good understanding of our current directory structure and the package.json file, we're going to get into the recommended directory structure. All right, so let me just close out of this. All right, so this is the recommended directory structure for a standard ViewPress site. All right, so what I mean by standard is, is that you're not writing your own theme or inheriting a theme. This is just for a standard ViewPress site. So here you have a docs directory, and then inside of there you'd have this dot ViewPress directory, and then inside of there you could have a components directory, and then you could have a public directory, styles directory, and then inside of there you'd have this index.style file, palette.style file, you could have templates. So you could have this templates directory, you could have this dev.html file, ssr.html file and then you could have a theme which is optional and then you could have your layout.view file right there and then you could have your config.js file or yeah that's a file and then you could have that enhance app.js file and then you could have that readme.md file which would be your home page and then that and then you could have an example dash page right here and that would be a directory that contains another page on your site and then you're just going to have that package.json file on the same level as your docs directory. And quick note here is that um, when creating these directories and files, be sure to follow the capitalization to prevent any potential issues. So just try to be consistent with uh, what you see right here. And the docs.viewpress, that's going to store the global configuration, components, static resources, etc. So that's this file right here. And also, a lot of these files and directories that you see, they're all optional. So you really don't need to include them to make a ViewPress site, but this is the recommended way to make a ViewPress site. So if you think you're going to need components of public directory, styles directory, all that stuff, then you would, um, you would set it up like this. 
All right, so then we have the docs.viewpress components directory, and this is going to be the view components um, that are in this directory automatically get registered as global components. And then you have the public directory inside of that .viewpress directory, and that's going to be your static resource directory, so you can put images in there, um, different favicons and stuff. And then you have the styles directory, so that's going to store your style-related files. And then the index.style, that's going to use, be used to add global styles that can override the default styles. And then we have the docs directory again, that, view, that dot viewpress directory, styles directory, palette.style file. And that's going to be used to define global styling variables and override the default styling variables. Okay. And then we're going to have the templates directory, and that's going to store HTML template files. And then inside of there, you could have a dev.html file, and that's the HTML template file for development environment. And then you can have that ssr.html, and that's going to be the HTML template file used in the build time. And then you could have a theme directory inside of there as well if you wanted to, to set up um, a theme. One way you could do it is you could include a theme um, directly inside of your .viewpress directory like this and have all these other directories. Um, but I think it's a little bit cleaner to just use this recommended directory structure for themes down here. Um, but one way you could do it is you could just have that theme directory and you could store the local theme of the site inside of there. All right, so then you have a layout.view file inside of that theme directory and that would be the layout component used by the theme. And then that config.js file, it's inside of the .viewpress directory, that's gonna be the entry file for configuration. And that can also be YAML or a TOML file instead of a JavaScript file. And then you have that enhance app.js file, and that's for app level enhancement. And then that readme.md file inside of the docs directory, that's going to be the first document for the site, which will be used as the home page. So it's the same file described in the current directory structure. So over here, if we list out, and then if we cd into docs, and then we list again, you see that readme.md, that's our current home page of the site. And then this directory right here, example dash page, and then with that readme.md, this is an example document, which is used as another page for the site. So here the route for the page would be the directory name, which would be example dash page. So if you made that directory, you put that readme.md file inside of there, ViewPress would then give you a route um, to example dash page. So whatever the directory name is, that would then be the route for that page. And then we have that package.json file, which again, is gonna describe that metadata about your site. And that's the same file in the current directory structure above. So that's that same package.json file that you see up here. All right, so now this is using the recommended directory structure for themes. So if you plan on writing your own theme for your site, or you plan on closely following along with these tutorials, then be sure to use the recommended directory structure for themes instead of the recommended directory structure for the standard ViewPress site up here. Um, this way is just going to be a little bit cleaner if you plan on just using it for themes. Um, but again, you, you also have the option of, uh, of just using that theme directory up there. But I like to put everything inside of, of the theme since, um, since it's all a part of one theme. So, uh, and then if you have any questions, then you can take a look at the directory structure for a ViewPress site uh, right up here. Kind of just summarizes again what we went over. All right, so, and then we have the recommended directory structure for themes. So here's the recommended directory structure if you plan on writing your own theme for your site. Since the CodeMonkeys blog is a child theme inherited from the default theme, we'll be using the recommended directory structure for themes when developing the blog. So we're going to use this directory structure here. All right, so we're going to be going over child themes and parent themes in more detail in future tutorials. But if you want to learn more now, you can go through uh, this documentation on theme inheritance right here. All right, so if you're not using any theme when developing your site, you have the option of using that recommended directory structure for a standard ViewPress site. Um, there should only be minor differences when following along with these tutorials, though. So you have the option of using that directory structure or going with this one um, specifically if you're going to be writing your own theme or developing uh, along with, with this blog. So when you make a theme, the only the layout.view file is mandatory when writing the theme. 
um, but we're going to be using the other recommended directories as we continue to develop the blog. So as we develop the blog, it's going to start to come together like this. So we have that docs directory, that .viewpress directory, and again we have that public directory. Then we're going to have our theme directory, and then inside of our theme directory we're going to have a components directory, a global components directory, the layouts directory with that layout.view file which is mandatory. And then we're going to have the styles directory with our index.style, palette.style files. We're going to have templates directory with those dev.html files and that ssr.html file. Now this templates directory, um, I haven't found a need to use it yet, so we may or may not actually use that. Um, and then we also have the enhance app.js file, and then we have our index.js file, and then we're going to have that config.js file, and that's going to be on the same level as that .viewpress directory. And then we have that readme.md file, which is, again is our home page, and then that example page directory, which would then hold another readme.md file, which would be another page on the website. And then we have our package.json file, which is on that same level as our docs directory. All right, so again, with the capitalization, you want to make sure that you're using the same capitalization up here to prevent any potential issues um, when developing. So just try to stick to the way that everything's um, capitalized out here and the spelling. Uh, just be consistent with it. And again, you know, it's the same stuff here as before. You have that dot view press towards the global configuration, theme static resources, public directory, static resource directory, the theme directory that's going to store the theme of the site. And then inside of here, there's a little bit of a difference. So here, that components directory inside of the theme directory, that's going to store the view components. And then if for the global view components, you would put those in um, the global components directory. And that would be the view components in the directory that automatically get registered as global components. So if you have, you know, a footer that you'd want on every page, then you can make that into a global component, for example. And then you have that layouts directory, and it's going to store the layout components used by the theme. That layout.view file inside of the layouts directory, that's the mandatory layout component used by the theme. And again, we have the styles directory, that's going to store the style related files. Then you have that index.style file used to add global styles that can override the default styles. Um, so if you're inheriting from a, uh, a parent theme, you can override the styles right here. And then we have the palette.style, and this is used to define global styling variables and override the default styling variables. So again, you can override any um, the default styling variables from a parent theme. And then we have that templates directory. It's going to store those HTML template files, that dev.html. Again, that's the HTML template file for the development environment. SSR.html is the template file used in the build time again. And then we have that enhance app.js file. That's going to be for theme level enhancement. And that index.js file, that's going to be for, that's going to be the entry file for theme configuration. And then our config.js file, that's going to be the entry file for configuration. And again, that can also be a YAML or a TOML file. Now, like we saw before, we have that readme.md. First document for the site is going to be the home page. And again, our example uh, page directory with that readme.md. Another exa example document is going to be another page. For the site and here the route would just be the directory name which would be example page here and then the package.json again is going to describe the metadata for the site and we're going to be discussing themes in more detail as we continue to develop the blog um, if you want to learn more now though you can check out the theme documentation this will kind of walk you through the directory structure um, how to use a theme writing a theme the configuration um, the blog theme the default theme theme inheritance so we're going to be going over that as we continue to develop the site as well. But this is just an overview of recommended directory structure um, for just a ViewPress site. Um, if you wanted to add a theme, if you don't want to add a theme with it, and um, if you want to have a theme, then you can just put everything inside of that theme directory um, if you plan on writing your own theme or just kind of following along with this. All right, so then we have the default page routing. So in the directory structure above, we use that docs directory as the target directory. So right here, our docs directory, um, that's going to be our target directory. And then if you want to learn more about how the target directory is used, then you can take a look at the command line interface documentation if you're curious. Um, but to see an example of the docs directory being used as the target directory, 
we can take a look at the scripts object we defined in the package.json file. So let's go to the package.json file over here. And there's our scripts object right here. So this is in the root directory of the project. And you can notice here that the target directory gets set as the docs directory for the docs colon dev and the docs colon build scripts. All right, so docs is the target directory there. And then we have this scripts object right here that we added in. All right, so remember that, you know, you would run yarn uh, docs colon dev, and then it would run this command over here, view press dev docs, build that development environment. And then you'd have, um, if you wanted to run view press build docs, you would run yarn docs colon build, and that would then build out the site for you. All right, so here, uh, all the relative paths are relative to the docs directory. So here are the relative paths and the default page routing paths for the directory structure described above. So here we have the relative path to that readme.md file. So let me just close out of this and CD out. Oh, let me CD back into the monkey's blog tutorials. All right, so go into docs right here, list out. So this would be the relative path to that. Uh, slash readme.md file. So it would be right inside of that docs directory, inside of that, the right inside of the docs directory is where that readme.md file is going to be. And then that's going to correspond to this page routing of the home page of the site. So just that forward slash right there. And then if we had an example page directory over here, so if we just did, uh, if we just make a directory and we just call it example dash page, and then we CD into that, CD into that, and we'll just uh, we can touch, make a file in here, another readme.md file. So then if we had this readme.md file inside of that um, example page directory, so this would be the relative path to it to that file based off of our target directory, which is the docs directory. And then this would be the corresponding page routing. So when you made the site, this would be the route of the page, would be that example dot dash page right there. All right, so from that table, you know, you can see the relative path for the home page again is slash readme.md and the default page routing path is again the slash. And then you can see the relative path for the example page um, it's going to be that slash example dash page slash readme.md and then the page routing for it's going to be that slash example dash page. All right, so this is the directory structure. All right, so we in this video, we went over the current directory structure of the site as it is right now. Um, and again, you may or may not have all of these directories and files based off of how you're setting up your site. But if you're following along, it should look like this. If you have the code exactly, it will look like this. And then we went over the contents of the package.json file. We made our simple updates to it um, right down here. And then we went over the uh, recommended directory structure kind of for a standard ViewPress site. Um, if you weren't using a theme or if you wanted to use a theme this way by just putting um, that theme directory inside of it, you have the option of doing that. Um, and then we also have this recommended directory structure for themes. So if you do plan on using a theme for your site, or if you just want to follow along with the blog and just the way that it's set up, then you can follow this recommended directory structure for themes, which again is very similar. It's just everything's inside of this theme directory. And, um, and then there's a little bit of a difference between how the global components we use the global components directory for global components versus the components directory. Um, and, but it's, it's very similar. So you should be able to follow along if you're using this other recommended directory structure. And then we just talked about the default page routing. All right. So kind of how our pages, how the relative path based off of our target directory, which is the docs directory in our case, how that relative path then corresponds to the page routing on the site. All right. So, in the next video, we're going to be looking at the basics of configuration. So that will be this post right here. Um, we'll get into this post in the next video. All right, we'll see you there.